Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Harmless Pranks. The film clips you saw at the opening of the show are from some of the stories we'll be bringing you today. With me, of course, is Sandy Miller. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Roger. Let's take a look at the lineup for this week's show. Okay, Roger. We've got a couple of really good pranks on this week's show. But before we begin, we'd like to have an interview with Wayne Burris. He's an old-time... Well, I don't want to give away the whole thing. You'll see what I mean in a couple of minutes. And we'll show the reaction of a housewife in Des Moines, Iowa, who comes home to find her entire diary, but not exactly where she left it. And finally, we'll show you what happened to a husband and wife in Rolling Prairie when they talked out against a television show. Ours. Oh boy, that ought to be a blast. Well, let's get started. We go now to the San Diego Hospital and reporter Tom Phillips. Uh, Thank you, Roger, and hello again, everyone. Today I'm in room 427 of the San Diego Hospital. With me is Mr. Wayne Brewers, an old-time prankster from the 30s. Now tell me, Mr. Brewers, uh, it says here that you invented the squirt ring. First of all, how did you get the idea for it? Mr. Brewers, how did you get the idea for the squirt ring? Well, everyone was in my, my rings, so I just thought it would be kind of funny. <laughs> I see. Well, it's a very clever idea. Just for old time's sake, how about telling us some of the old pranks you used to pull on people when you were a youngster? A youngster? Yeah, the pranks. Oh, pranks. Well, one time we put tar in the ink wells, and then there was the time we glued the teacher's books together. <laughs> ah, yes, the old glued books trick. Any more pranks, Mr. Brewers? Yes. One time we put a frog in the teacher's desk. <gasps> and when she found it, she fainted. <gasps> so we hid a body. And when the principal came in, he couldn't find her. <laughs> ah, yes, the old hidden body trick. Now, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Brewers. <laughs> Mr. Brewers! Wait. The old hidden body trick. It just might work. Now remember, when doing the old hidden body trick, make sure that when moving the when moving the body, you don't damage it anymore. Broken bones, concussions, things like that. Oh my gosh, what's this a brewers? He's helped us start breaking in the nurse's station. Uh, Mr. Who, I, I'm the only one here. I'm doing a documentary on life support systems. I guess I flipped the wrong switch. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, nurse, he's probably in another room, and he could be dead by now, thanks to you. I mean it. This could be your job, lady. We better go find him, and he better be alive. Well, by gosh, Roger, I guess the old hidden body trick still works after all these years. And we got a nurse in trouble to boot, too. Roger, back to you. Thanks, Tom, and good work. Special condolences to the family of Mr. Wayne Brewers. The heart attack is not fatal, but the fall from the broke his neck. Sandy? Hmm. Let's go now to Des Moines, Iowa, the home of widower, or should I say swinging widower, Ella Winston. She recently wrote to our producer complaining about some of the pranks we pull on people. So reporter Helen Crosby wanted to go have a talk with her. But before she could get together with Mrs. Winston, she wanted to find some let's say, background information. So she snuck inside and found, of all things, Ella Winston's diary. And somehow or another, before we knew it, someone had turned it over to the Des Moines Evening Herald. Let's go now to Des Moines. Thanks, Raj. Mrs. Ella Winston has just come home from the grocery store. The evening paper was waiting on the front step. She hasn't seen it yet, but she will soon enough. Let's go watch. Uh-oh, here she goes. Well, it looks like another successful harmless prank. Let's go in and have a word with Mrs. Winston. Mrs. Winston? Uh, Mrs. Winston? Mrs. Winston? Well, how does it feel?
still to be the victim of another harmless prank. Mrs. Winston? Well, it looks like Mrs. Winston's a little shook up right now, and she should be. Sandy? Thank you, Helen. Good work. Since the time of that report, we understand that Mrs. Winston has changed her name, moved to another city, and even taken on a new occupation to avoid all the embarrassment that the newspaper ad caused. But a good reporter always follows through. Helen Crosby sure did. She's changed her name to Frances Miller. Her new, her new address is 233 Woodland Drive, Miami, Florida. So if you were one of the many people mentioned in her diary, you might like to get in touch with her at a new location. We'll keep following this report and inform you of any further changes. And now finally for the big one of the night. It seems that Mr. and Mrs. Brian Sanders of Rolling Prairie have been starting petitions complaining about our show. They claim that pranks, even harmless ones such as pulling chairs out from under people, whoopee cushions, tying people's shoelaces together and vaseline on door handles and things like that can be dangerous. But we don't agree. In fact, we think they're darn right hilarious and we think that deep down inside the Sanders feel the same way too. But rather than go and reason with them, we thought we'd show them firsthand. So yesterday morning, a few members of our staff, along with reporter Alan Cook, dropped in on the Sanders. Here's Alan. Thanks, Raj. We're at the Brian Sanders home. The Sanders aren't up yet, but they should be getting up any time now. Our crew here has been working since 3 a.m. this morning just getting things ready. I'll tell you a few of the things we're going to be doing, because when they get up, we'll have to hide. First of all, we put their clocks ahead two and a half hours, so they'll think they're late getting up. Second of all, we put Vaseline on the door handles, and, well, you'll see. I think they're getting up. Get out of my head, 7 o'clock! Oh my god! The clock says it's 9.30! I'm late for work! Hey, Anthony, sit down. Get you some coffee. What are you doing down there? Very funny, Susan. Hurry up, I gotta get to work. I didn't do that. One of the kids must have left it there last night. Come on, sit down on me. You gotta keep going. Well, you better leave. I gotta get the kids to school. They're late, too. Very funny, Susan. I didn't do that. Well, then, for crying out loud, who did? I don't know, but don't blame it on me. Darn those kids. Oh, honey, we better have a talk with those kids. I got time. Oh, and by the way, we've disconnected the brake line on Mr. Sanders' car. And for Mrs. Sanders, we just can't forget the skateboard on the driveway trick. Well, we've done our job here for today. We've had fun pulling the tricks on the Sanders. Maybe you will think twice about complaining about our show again. Well, now back to the studio. Sandy? <laughs> that was great, guys. Just great. Well, that about wraps it up for today's show. Roger? Thanks, Sandy. Uh, and just to show everyone that we don't want to be bad sports about the whole thing, everyone appearing on today's show gets a copy of the Harmless Pranks game to play at home. You get all the pranks you see needed to play the pranks right here on TV. Whoopee cushion, squirting flower, hand buzzer, rope, and a few more surprises. You also get a copy of the Harmless Pranks catalog, so you can pick from over thousands of different Harmless Pranks. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to watch next week when I substitute as an air traffic controller at the Kennedy Airport in New York. And I'll be a female cabbie at a city I've never been to before. Thanks a lot. This is Harmless Pranks. Be sure to watch us again next week. Good night.